As a new developer, you often hear that once you learn the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that you should learn a front-end tool. But which? It's an interesting one, actually, because React, Angular, and Vue are quite unique in the sense that they don't just have users, they have fans and actual advocates, which I think is awesome. I love that we as developers get so excited about our tools. But I also recognize that as a new developer, it can be quite tricky to make an objective decision around all the fanfare and celebration for these particular tools. We want you to learn the right thing that's right for you and your goals, not necessarily just what is popular, which is why in this video, I am going to break down the key differences between Angular, React, and Vue through the lens of a new developer before moving on to explore which has the most jobs, how easy are they to learn? How often do these tools change and update? At the end, I'm going to share my recommendation for which I think you should learn if you're a new developer based on the facts and figures shared in this video. Let's kick things off with a quick tour of these three technologies and their key differences. Angular was first released in 2010 by Google, although it was first released under a different name, which was Angular.js. A few years after 2010 and 2016, Google basically rebuilt Angular from the ground up. Tonight, we are finally announcing Angular 2.0 Final. They borrowed some of the terminology and some of the design patterns from the original version of Angular, but this new version was so different to signify to the developer community that this was basically its new own thing and you would have to relearn it from the beginning, Angular dropped the .js parts. It's cleaner. What makes Angular the most notable compared to its counterparts is that when you use Angular, you get quite a lot of features out of the box. And then Angular really wants you to embody what I will call the Angular way. You really need to adopt Angular's project structure, patterns, and modules. Did I mention Angular also requires you to use TypeScript, which is a special flavor of JavaScript with its own additional learning curve. Of course, Angular wouldn't ask so much of new Angular developers unless they were pretty convinced that their way was the right way and there were some significant advantages to be had. The Angular way takes some initial time to learn, especially for beginners and people who don't know TypeScript already. However, as your application grows in complexity, the Angular way makes it much more likely that your project structure evolves neatly in such a way that you can continue to add bug-free features efficiently. Because Angular suits big applications really well, it's been adopted by some really big companies like Microsoft and Fortune 500, so you can be sure you will be in good company. You might think that since Angular is built by Google, that Google.com and YouTube would be built with Angular, but surprisingly, that's not the case. React.js was originally released in 2013 by Meta, formerly known as Facebook. If you compare React and Angular by how many features they give you out of the box, React has a lot less going on by default. Some people misunderstand that to mean that React is lightweight or more lightweight than Angular. But the truth is to build a comparable application, you will typically need to install additional open source modules specifically built for React. The difference is React doesn't really care which modules you use. They don't provide many official ones, meaning when the time comes to add a certain module, you normally get three or four very popular battle-tested ones to pick from. And it's kind of up to you how you implement them in your application. React is only concerned with structuring and updating your user interface out of the box. Since React is less opinionated or basically has no opinions about how you structure your application, it's up to you to figure out how to structure your application in a way that it scales and is maintainable. It's a bit tricky and it actually contributes to the learning curve, but we know it can be done because Meta themselves use React in many portions of the company, including Facebook.com. Moving on to Vue.js, which is sometimes considered to be the underdog among these free front-end web developer tools. It was released in 2014, just one year after React, by a developer who used to work for Google on Angular. In practical terms, React and Vue are quite comparable in that they don't offer that much out of the box and are concerned only with updating your UI efficiently at heart. 
Vue is arguably the easiest of these free tools to learn as you can get pretty far with your existing knowledge of HTML and JavaScript without the need to learn additional things like TypeScript in the case of Angular or even JSX in the case of React. You don't necessarily have to worry about tools as well because you can link Vue via a CDN with just one line of HTML essentially. However, maybe it's because Vue doesn't really have the backing of a big company like Facebook, excuse me, Meta or Google, it hasn't quite been as successful in garnering adoption in the job market. And this is definitely something to keep in mind if your goal is to become a hireable developer. With that in mind, let's take a bit of a closer look at the job market as it pertains to these free front-end tools. Starting with Angular, there are plenty of Angular jobs. Moving quite quickly onto React, there are also plenty of React jobs. I think it's fair to group these together due to their shared popularity and the same reason why they're popular. Basically, companies think that, well, if this is good enough for Google, if it's good enough for Meta, then it, it must be good enough for us. And they've adopted these tools in troves. Naturally, the more websites built using these technologies, the more opportunities for developers to get jobs maintaining and adding features to them. I don't think it really matters like what new hot framework or tool or library comes out next because once these technologies have a foothold, once companies adopt them, they don't really change unless they have exceptionally good motivation. It's expensive to start from scratch and retrain their teams. Reputation matters too, and no matter how good the next thing, even if it's actually better for developers, it just won't have the same nine to 12 year track record in the case of Angular. Kind of unfortunately, Vue just does not have as many jobs in North America and the West. It's a really interesting example because if you look at the GitHub stars, which is a measure of popularity, Vue has more than React at the time of this recording. So the popularity of a framework might not actually be an indication of how it's being used in the real world and what jobs are available. Vue came a little bit later than React and Angular, but not by much. I would hypothesize that because Vue does not have the same backing from big companies, it hasn't been quite as popular. With that said, you should definitely draw your own conclusion based on your local job market and your goals. You know, for example, if your goal is to become a freelancer and you're building websites for local businesses, they won't care what front end tool you're using, right? And so this section is basically irrelevant. In North America, Europe and other parts of the West especially, React and Angular dominate the search results on websites like LinkedIn and Indeed, which is a good proxy, I think, for their popularity. That said, you might find pockets within these markets where for one reason or another, Vue has been adopted more. That could be your local job market. You may also find that in other parts of the world, Vue has more adoption by companies who might not want to have ties with big Western tech companies like Google or Facebook. For example, Alibaba is a company that is quite heavily invested in Vue.js. Maybe now you're starting to form an opinion about which might be best for you and your situation, but let's keep going and explore how difficult these front-end tools are to learn. Most developers agree that Angular is the most difficult of the three to learn, or at least has the steepest learning curve due to the fact that you need to spend some time initially embodying the Angular way, plus probably if you're a new developer learning TypeScript. As a reminder, Angular forces you to write your code base in a specific way that can be slow at first, but makes you faster and more productive as your application becomes more complex or you start to work within a team and alongside other developers. This can involve learning Angular specific concepts like directives, modules, decorators, components, services, as well as some other ideas like dependency injection, pipes, templates, and that kind of thing. You know, a learning curve has a timeline at the bottom, right? And in fairness to Angular, with Vue and React, as your applications become more complex, you will have to learn additional modules to achieve some of the things that Angular does out of the box. You'll also need to make sure that you learn how to scale your code base, otherwise you could end up shooting yourself in the foot. Again, in fairness to Angular, even though you don't have to adopt TypeScript with Angular or Vue, you can, that is an option. And in fact, many developers, especially on bigger projects, choose to adopt TypeScript anyway for the benefits it affords. React in comparison is quite plain. And so if you have a pretty strong understanding of JavaScript and a good course at your disposal, 
you can probably set up React quite quickly. Although React has less going on than Angular out of the box, you still need to learn some React specific concepts like states, props, and hooks in particular, alongside a few other bits. You will also need to learn a JavaScript add-on feature called JSX, which to make that work, you also need to learn typically some tooling like Babel and Webpack. Although for beginners, there are boilerplates and scaffolders, which set all this up for you without you needing to worry about what's happening behind the scenes. Moving on to Vue, I actually wrote a Twitter post or thread about this topic recently, and some new developers that follow me based on their experience really supported what I thought was true, which is that Vue probably is the easiest to get started with. There just aren't many jobs. When it comes to syntax, the only thing you really need to learn is Vue's templating syntax, which could be quite intuitive. If you know HTML and or JavaScript, you don't need to learn an additional tool like TypeScript or JSX, which is quite nice. As I mentioned before, you can also reference Vue with a single line of code, basically, as opposed to having to invest in build tools like Babel and Webpack combined, I guess you could call that a build tool. Additionally, Vue's single file components keep all of your code in the same place, making it intuitive to scale up your project. Since neither React nor Vue really force you to build your application in a certain way, you sort of have to take the responsibility to learn how to structure your project in a way that it is easy to keep updating or bring on additional developers in the future. Remember, a learning curve has a sort of time thing at the bottom, right? And it's quite easy to sort of ignore this. But actually, if you ignore it, it will just end up taking even longer when you get it wrong and have to go back to the beginning. All right, let's talk about how often these tools are updated and what that means for you as someone considering learning them. Stability is really important because it ensures that the you know functions you're calling, the libraries, modules, and even tutorials and things you reference don't become obsolete unexpectedly. It's also necessary for these tools to update frequently enough that they continue to evolve with the web ecosystem and allow you to support your users' needs as their demands on the web become greater. It's a balancing act, right? And broadly speaking, there are two types of updates. There are updates where these tools add new features and you can install them and use them and learn them if you want, but you don't have to. Then there are updates that either remove or fundamentally change things you were previously depending on. It would require you to really learn a few new things and maybe rewrite parts of your application to adopt these updates. As developers, we call those breaking changes. It's quite a strong word to signify that if you update without knowing what to expect, you might break parts of your application. You might remember from the beginning that in 2016, Angular basically recreated everything and much to the dismay of course authors or code module authors or learners who had just learned Angular, they now knew that the thing they learned was more or less deprecated and to be replaced with this new version. I think some developers perceive that as flashy, which is why I think Angular are now today very deliberate with their updates. A breaking release happens at most every six months, according to Angular. And even then they say in their documentation that it won't be that bad. Even if something does have to change, they will normally provide you with tutorials, documentation, plenty of warning, and in some exceptional cases, tools to help make that migration easier. From the very beginning, React had this philosophy of being very stable as an API. You have to understand that because Meta used React in many parts of their company and indeed many parts of Facebook, if Meta changed something in React, they would then need to update all their applications in the company. And so I think they feel and empathize firsthand with the difficulty of having to update a tool when there are breaking changes introduced. Although React does not have a release schedule like Angular, I would say that from the very beginning of React, they had this philosophy about getting it right and then not changing it very much. Maybe because React has a more singular focus than Angular, this was a more viable philosophy. Vue, the underdog, does not have a fixed release schedule either, although you can typically expect new features every two to three months for the core. That's good to know because it means Vue is evolving, but these new features are not something you have to adopt and they won't break your applications. 
What I can say is in the, I think, eight or nine years that Vue.js has been around, they've only released two breaking changes, right? From Vue 1 to Vue 2 and from Vue 2 to Vue 3. And even then, a lot of developers describe the change between, I think, Vue 1 and Vue 2 as like 90% the same, much like Angular. And in fairness, React, even though they don't have to because they don't break things as often, uh, they always provide a really pleasant update path, including tutorials and in some cases, tools. You can be pretty sure if you're learning Vue that you will always have something quite cutting edge and with cool things happening around it, but also pretty damn stable. So, you know, I promised I would offer a conclusion based on my research in this video, and I think I can put it quite simply when I say that Angular has just too steep of a learning curve for most new developers. I would not recommend trying to learn TypeScript along everything else because it can be super overwhelming and has its own challenges. So that brings us to React and Vue. But unfortunately, you know, Vue just has not been adopted in the same way in the job markets. And even though it's my belief that if you learn something like Vue, you can probably learn React more quickly as there are some overlaps in the problems they solve and the concepts. Unfortunately, when you're applying for your first junior developer jobs, and I kind of know this, by the way, because I host the Scrimba podcast where I speak with a lot of newly hired developers and hiring managers, the kind of harsh truth is that many of the times, you know, hiring managers are connecting resumes to job descriptions and the keywords in them, and really React will just give you the best chance of being hireable. I didn't mention it in this video because I felt it would be a tangent, but one nice plus of React is that there is also React Native, which is like a conscious effort by Meta to help you convert your React applications into native looking and feeling applications, which you can deploy to the Play Store or the App Store on Android and iOS respectively. Just something cool to know and keep in mind. Hopefully now you have some opinion about which is best for you and your situation. As it happens on Scrimba, we have courses about Angular, Vue and React, although because we realized that our goal is to help developers become hireable and you have the best chance of being hireable if you learn React, we've actually like hidden the Angular and Vue courses. You can only find them if you Google them. But I have linked High and Proud in the show notes, a link to our free React course with Bob Zerol. People really like it because it's interactive, which helps you remember what you're learning and you build projects along the way so you have something to show employers in your portfolio. Re the React.js subreddit are kind enough to feature us in their sidebar. And if you just search around on Twitter for like React Scrimba, you'll see hopefully all the really nice things people are saying in case you want some more sort of data points to make a decision about which course to invest in. That's all from me in this video. My name is Alex Booker. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please do remember to subscribe to the Scrimba YouTube channel, give the video a like, and in just a second, if you're still around, you can pick from another video to watch.